In this video, it is time to dive into how we integrated the Stream Deck Studio in the universe of Skyhawk. And we did that by translating the native protocol of Stream Deck Studio into raw panel protocol. And that is used by a lot of people. We use it ourselves in Skyhawk to connect Reactor to our panels. External third parties are using it all over the place to integrate our panels in their softwares. So what you see here on the screen is the Stream Deck Studio on the left side of the slide. And the Stream Deck Studio has two options for connectivity. You can either use USB or you can use Ethernet. And that's new to be able to use Ethernet. Now, in either case, we use the same application called X Panel Stream Deck. That's the one you see right here. So that's the piece of software that connects to the Stream Deck Studio, regardless of whether it's Ethernet or USB connected to the uh, Blue Pill device. And uh, by the way, the device that needs to do that connection, that's like the black box here, that would either be a Blue Pill server, we have it right here on the table, or it could be any of our panels, regardless of whether it has a USB-A port or not. Some of these panels do not have USB-A, and today we'll be using a Rack Fusion Live, which is one of our panels with joysticks, faders, knobs, and all those things that you get don't get from Stream Decks. And that panel has no USB connection useful to drive a Stream Deck, but it can still run XPanel Stream Deck and connect to the Stream Deck Studio. So. On this side, we have that proprietary Stream Deck Studio or Stream Deck Protocol. And on the other side, we have Raw Panel, which is generic and useful for any device that you want to connect. So advantages of Raw Panel Protocol is that it's quick and easy ASCII-based protocol. It can also be binary, but for most of you, if you want to get started quickly, it is great to use ASCII commands. It is one standard that goes for all panels you want to connect. So if you integrate Raw Panel Protocol, you will be compatible with Stream Decks. X keys panels, but also all the Skyhoy panels. It is also well described and documented. It has so-called topology support, and that's a part of the secret because the panel, a raw panel, will be able to expose itself, which buttons does it have, which knobs, faders, and so on. And uh, you can actually render the panel graphically. In other words, you can make an awesome configurator for your panels if you use raw panel protocol because the topology is given by it. And finally, it is also a way to network Stream Deck and generally USB devices like you also find them from X keys and various like gaming joysticks and uh, even an APM joystick like which is an industrial joystick you can connect and, and do this. Now the disadvantage of it is that it does have a license cost. We require a license to run this uh, expand Stream Deck. It's like around $100 or so. And there's also of course the indirection. In case you only want to do the Stream Deck Studio integration you can ask yourself, why do I want to go through this middle layer, this middle software, and all the advantages is right here. And if they are important to you, you should do that. On our wiki pages, wikis.skahoy.com, you'll find Stream Deck on Raw Panel article. You search it up in the search bar and you'll find this article. And that explains everything about how Stream Deck will connect through a USB hub to our Blue Pill devices. If you scroll down, you'll find information on the Stream Deck Studio, including some of the things that we have discovered about this panel, like um, how are the keys to be operated? What are the tile sizes of these? How many segments does the LED have? How do you connect to it in the native form? And so on. Those details are given on this website. And additional information is also exposed, like how do you connect or configure the NFC? card reader. So there's some JSON code here that you want to um, install into the application. And uh, if you wonder what is raw panel protocol anyway, now that I've been talking about it, I really want you to go to darkroomscarhoy.com. By the way, great website where you can find an image gallery of all the Skyhoy products that you could dream of. They are, they are right here, beautiful render uh, pictures and renderings. In the download sections, this is why I find our product catalog, but also the raw panel booklet, this one. And that's a great read because that will explain to you what is the raw panel protocol, how does it work, how are triggers sent over to you, how do you send feedback, return to the panel, the message encoding options, which uh, widgets and UTF-8 text, and the self-describing topology I talked about, including a simulation tool, by the way. So it's really easy to get started developing with it. So all that is on uh, this website. Now I want to get to connecting to it after all this introductory talk. And what you see right here is the web UI of my Rack Fusion Live. 
and it is on this IP address. It has these menu items in the packages section. This is where you find the running applications on it, and you go for the one called Streamlink. Where is it? Um, it's probably turned off. Yes. Okay. So that's the one. I would just enter into this UI, and you can see you can uh, tell it which is the raw panel port you want to use. This is like our default port number, but be careful. A lot of raw panel devices are using that, and you can't have that twice on the same device. So uh, you may choose something else, but anyway, it's it's a good starting point. Uh, then we can scroll down. You, you find some options like how many clients do you want to allow connecting, um, which IPs do you want to limit connections to, and that can be interesting when you have panels where you want to limit which IPs are allowed to connect to it. It's like soft security. Then we have something called LED mode. I'll get back to that uh, later. Um, a large text might be useful, especially on the Stream Deck Studio, because it has a high resolution display and it's um, in many cases not useful for the type of text that we brand on it. And then finally here, the Stream Deck's on IP, which is a section where you set up your Stream Deck Studio, you activate it, you type in its IP address, you tell it which server port do you want to use for its raw panel. Uh, exposed interface, and then finally the uh, LED mode. Let's just uh, set that to, to not set. We want to enable the whole thing here, which it would be if I just start the application. So let's just save and restart this config, and you'll see immediately the panel is actually like uh, initializing with a Skyhoy animation that is cool, and now it's actually um, ready for connections. So if you read that raw panel um, booklet, you will notice that you can use a um, so-called Telnet, or it's a TCP connection. And there are various tools. You have a potty on Windows, you have a um, Telnet on, on Linux uh, terminals. On Mac, we call it NC Netcat. And uh, I'll simply type in the IP address that you find in the display of it. Uh, it says dot eight, and then you uh, the, the port number was, uh, 9923. Uh, okay, so I'm actually connected to it. I type in list, that's like an initialization command you send to it, and it will tell you, hey, I'm a Stream Deck Studio. I have this serial number. I have these features you can use, and it blanks out. But see what happens when I press the buttons on it, I get really simple triggers. That's what I mean. That's the ASCII mode. You don't get anything close to that if you connect straight up to it. No, what was that? By the way, that, uh, that port number, we could uh, just try out. Okay, so that's the port number here. Um, let's quickly try that. Okay, so basically, mm, of course, I need to connect it to the right IP address. So now I'm actually connected to the Stream Deck and it's sending me over binary stuff, but it will disconnect because there's a keep alive that it requires. But if I press buttons, you can see I've received something, but it's not visible because this is binary data and that is what we solve for you using the raw panel protocol. Okay, let's just quickly get back to that. So we'll connect back to our panel here and uh, initialize. And so buttons is one thing. I can also rotate on the encoders. I can click the encoders. And all those things are documented in our raw panel protocol documentation. But we also have some pretty awesome tools that will help you to expose the and play with these things, by the way. So just keep this format in mind because that will be um, no wait. Actually, what I want to show you is that I can turn on like the LED of uh, the first one. So in our universe, we will uh, operate with uh, the concept of an LED. This command will actually turn on the first button. And that LED I was talking about is like the, the bar in the top. We'll see that as I'm putting content over to it. So over here, I have a browsing tool. It's called Raw Panel Explorer, and that tool can be downloaded from our GitHub repository. I'll invite you to do that. The cool thing is that it scans the network. It finds all the raw panel devices that announces itself on the network, and one of those is our Stream Deck Studio right here. So if I connect to it, whoa, that just brings up the topology, and that topology is, as I said, delivered by the panel. The panel tells this application, this is how I look, this is the buttons I have, and so on. So we have essentially made it very, very easy for you to make that configurator. Now, let me press that button and you see it is responding actually with indications on this graphic that those buttons were pressed. I can do the same over here for the encoder. And here we have an event scope and that event scope will basically tell you, okay, press down, press up. So it's like a square pulse. And if I turn those encoders around, you can see that it is sending plus and minus pulses. I can also press the encoder down, etc. Can I put content back into the panel? Because that's kind of more the tricky thing, right? Actually, yes. So I will basically just select one of them and then I can press on. And now it turns on. I can also set other fixed colors. These are legacy functions. So I would propose you use on 
We also have something called dimmed. And if you use that, you see it kind of dims out a little bit. And then you have off, which is, it's just black, okay? So I turn it on, I change the color to red. You now have a red bar in the top and so on. What about text? You can also put in text. You can put a title. You can also put in, in the text field here, hello. And then you, you now see text rendered on it. And then you could put in world. You have a second text line. It sort of adapts all these things and it shows nicely in the display as you can see right now. So uh, that's what you can do with Raw Panel Explorer. And of course, it's only fun if you could convert this into something you could use in your applications. And that is shown down here because we were so smart to tell you what are the commands that gave these results. And that's exactly what you see right here. The command to set the text in the most basic form would be this one. And the number one right there is the button you want to send it to. So this is how you set a title. This is how you set text line one, text line two, and have uh, it look like it does right there. But you can also use this JSON code instead. And that is for many of you guys probably much more convenient. And finally, you can also use the bi binary protobuf encoded message format for which we also provide free um, definitions for protobuffer messages, if you know what that is. And uh, But if you do, you know that you want it. If you don't, then you probably know that JSON is sufficient for, for your um, experiments and your application integrations. All right, so we did that. So what about the encoders? Can I light up an encoder? So I click it and uh, can I turn it on? Yes, you can. Now you have light in the encoder. Can I change the color? Yes, you can also do that. But most interestingly, what about the LED ring behind the encoder? Can I control that? Yes, you can. And you simply need to choose one of these modes. The most fun mode we could choose for this would be VU meter. Actually, I want to do it on both because that's sort of nice. Okay, so VU meter and I run a demo. And now you see those two displays actually becoming VU meters. So I'm sending over a, a mode of data where an integer from like one to plus 1000 is like the, the values that will make the VU meter uh, light up. And you see it um, right here in action in a, in a demo mode. I want to stop it now again because, um, yeah, that's great if you want to do audio applications, right? If you uh, go to the steps mode, it means that both of these, and now they, they will be synchronous because I think I selected both of them. So if I set it to one step, you see the first LED turns on. If I set it to two steps, then the second turns on, the, the, the third turns on like this, and fourth and so on. Can I also set the color? Yes, you can. You can choose the color of the LED by simply picking the color up here in uh, any of these. And you can also have a color picker come up if you, if you want like any RGB color. You can just set it as an RGB color. So I've chosen something uh, bluish. If you go to the strength mode, which is another one that is really useful, then you basically get an indication, which is, um, yeah, you'll see exactly what I mean. If I type in 500, you see that halfway now, the, the LED bar lights up halfway. Full range would be 1,000, and nothing would be, you know, one. And if I type in 100, I'll probably get one or two LEDs. 150 would probably give me two, etc. Those numbers of LEDs are actually adjustable because there are 24 LEDs, but I have only given you 13 here, and I've offset them a little bit because the standard LED that it starts out with is the one in the top. And all that can be configured quite nicely within our configuration uh, in the blue pill. Let me just quickly see. I need to go to the right fusion live. Yes. And inside this deep config field, you see the value 13. Now let's expand that to maybe 17 just to be, um, yeah, 17. Okay, let's, let's just do that, save. And you'll see that as it's now uh, reinitializing, we can go back to the raw panel explorer in a moment as it's uh, becoming ready for us. And there we go. Okay, now you, you already see the 17 LEDs, but uh, you just saw it briefly right there uh, as it, uh, and I can also like go full throttle and you'll now see the same thing again. Now, um, but it's kind of offset and that offset is exactly what I was able to change in this VR. So I'll just make that minus nine and it goes back. Okay, so um, I want you to notice one thing. As it is rebooting, you can see here that if you go down in, this, in the topology, the topology for LED one and two was set to 17 steps. But now as it reconnects to the panel, it has, ah, it has not connected it, oh, sorry. It doesn't tell you where it starts. The offset was what I changed. And by the way, the offset is now changed so that we have like a 
symmetrical display of the LED ring around the encoder. But my, my point was that you can probably easily imagine that further, uh, you know, before when it was 13 steps, it would say this LED ring has 13 steps. And that's exactly what the topology is. Just like you see for all this information that the display size is 144 by um, 82 pixels. It's RGB compatible, which means that if I click any of these buttons, like this one. Okay, let's just clear it out. Okay, so I click this one and I will uh, send over a graphic, uh, either uh, black and white, I can send over grayscale, I can send over a color graphic for that particular display. It, again, as a text, and by the way, you see down here, uh, this is the ASCII format, it's ridiculous, right? So it's just line and lines and lines and lines and lines of base 64 encoded stuff. You wanna use JSON for that, right? But this is kind of provided for legacy reasons. And finally, binary protobuf is a world of its own, super useful if you're into that. But um, it's basically base64 encoded image data. Um, there are formats of how to do that. And by the way, we can also send over PNG data and, and, and have it automatically scaled on the panel. That is called a processor, and you can read more about that in our awesome raw panel booklet right there. Okay, going back to this one, uh, let's try out um, a configuration option that um, would also be quite interesting for you, for you to consider. The one called last text right now is actually what renders the text fairly large when you see the, the display. And I like that a lot because these displays are super, super high resolution. So if I, let me say, just uh, clear out everything here, then um, let's type in some text. Oh, sorry. And um, we just type that in. So it's it's nice and clear to read what is in the display right now. If you go in here and, sorry, I need to be on the right one. Okay, and I disable large text, then it will actually become much smaller. But um, so that's one thing that we want to observe. Another thing is the LED mode. By default, it's set to bar. That's what you see right now. You can also set it to background or you can set it to none. If you set it to none, it means that the whole display will just become like like one big graphic where you can, if, if you set the color of the button, it won't matter. And it is even being told to you on the raw panel protocol. So just notice what happens here as it has now updated itself. Um, the Actually, this is the native pixel resolution of the display tiles that is reported now. That It is reported that it has no RGB output, so you can't set a color. It won't matter. If I, if I click any of these and press out, you see nothing on the unit because all I can do is to send over like a graphic in some sort. And um, and I can type in text and now you will see exactly what I mean because that text line is kind of small, right? Compared to what it was a moment ago. So um, that's a little bit uh, tricky. Let's just quickly go over here and choose a different LED mode. One that I find quite interesting background because it resembles a little bit what you have seen in other cases, namely that we put the color in the background behind what is often black and white graphics anyway. and when doing so, then you'll see the uh, panel as it boots up. And when we uh, also have the topology updated here, you'll see that this actually comes back. It is now RGB colored LEDs again. So I can pick this one. I can set a background color. Now it's painting the whole button. And I can also put in text and graphics. So here is again my hello world coming up. All right. And I can put in my title up here and I can make it a solid header bar if I want and so on. So this is really nice. We have a great script for kind of um, exploring the capabilities of panels. This is mostly for fun demo and so on. Uh, I will open it now over in Visual Studio Code. And if I run it like this, connecting to the panel, you'll see that as I'm pressing here, I actually get triggers over reported um, from, you know, in, in this console. Um, so it does the same as connecting with Netcat uh, as I did a moment ago, but after like five seconds of uh, idle time, it will start rotating content on the connected panel. The, it would do the same for my uh, Rack Fusion Live over here in the background, but right now you can sort of see just a mix of backgrounds and sample text and uh, sample images put onto these buttons. So it sort of demonstrates the capabilities of, uh, of the product. Uh, it is also downloadable from our GitHub uh, repo. And let me see, where are those? Um, did I bring those up somewhere? Now I seem to have dark room all over the place here, but you can definitely, let's use Firefox. 
Uh, you can go to Skahoy online and find raw panel utils. There you find color display button test script, and that is kind of nice for testing raw panel devices, seeing the capabilities of them. But you definitely need the uh, raw panel explorer. Uh, maybe let's try searching for that. So Skahoy repositories, raw panel explorer. Do we see it anything anywhere here? Raw, raw panel. Ah, not poor, but raw. Okay, you have Raw Panel Explorer right here, and you have uh, releases, so you can download this for Mac, um, Windows, and Linux, and uh, run it locally on your machine. Final thing I want to show you is how we can use the NFC reader on the product, and we did it in a, a quite simple way. You actually see two hardware components right here with IDs 100, 101, and it would continue to 102, etc. if we added more user groups. So we have made a concept where there is user groups, and then you can have NFC tags like these added to a user group. So I added an admin and a user user group. And how to set that up? That's shown on the wiki page. This is the majority of the JSON code that I was showing to you for configuration. Namely, how would you structure data that sets up an admin and a user user group? And how would you add in the card numbers and the description of what these would be? It works like you see on this page. So you basically copy this, copy it, uh, edit it somewhere. You can add more objects to it. And then you would paste it in on your blue pill device. So if you go to your blue pill device and you find this field called deep config, you just paste it in right there. And then you can um, expect this to uh, identify your, your objects, your NFC cards. But uh, how do you know the code of the NFC cards? You can simply just put it over on the panel and it will show you that it found this travel card it has this ID. Here is my key fob. It has this ID and it tells you that in the log files, you'll have to copy that over. So right now, we don't have a fancy UI to let you do this in a like, hey, record my NFC card added to a group that might come one day. But for now, we just did quick and dirty, adding it into a JSON structure that will stay. But we also expect to have a nice UI for, for it later. I want to turn attention back to Raw Panel Explorer because adding those two use groups gives you these two um, uh, components. And just like if I press a button on the panel, it responds with the trigger. Same way, if I use my key fob, it does correspond to pressing this little admin button here. So if it was a button, I just get like a button pressed, button released. And if I use my key card, which is in the user group, I get a pulse on the other one. So that is the simple way we decided to integrate that first, because it means you can tie any action to it. Anytime somebody triggers like pressing a button with an NFC card, you can do whatever you want. You can use it to control access inside of Reactor. You can also decide yourself because this video was about how we can facilitate your integration of Stream Deck Studio using the raw panel protocol through the XPanel Stream Deck application that runs on any Skahoy device and does not require a computer behind other than the ones that sits inside of our products. I hope this was useful to you. Reach out if you have any questions about Raw Panel Protocol. It is becoming more and more popular with a lot of third-party vendors of uh, software solutions and hardware to use Skahoy panels in this way. And of course, now you can also do it with Stream Deck Studio.